Before I get out of here, I want to show you the beautiful structure and design of this particular area here. Now, somebody uh, string trimmed all this out, got it all cleaned up because we're moving towards the new season. I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. This is a hill slope and water comes down here. This top part is the strawberry beds that I talked about in a couple videos ago, quite a few videos ago. It's designed for water, and I'm gonna explain what these elements are doing. It's designed for water to channel, but to keep the strawberries up out of the air so that they don't have a lot of soak wet roots. But the water will come down in this channel and it will spread between areas. And you can see how it's a little wet in this spot right here. You can hear that little sogginess. But as it gradually gets to that edge, it'll soak and spread in that edge here. Then we have a pie-shaped wedge, and you can see how the water can come down, and then there's like a pie-shaped wedge the next row down, which was tilled out or, or grown out with uh, cucumbers and such, and then another shelf a little bit further down. Now, let's contrast the design here with what's behind me, because this is short, shallow uh, beds or terraces, and it's a good system. It works really well, but it's better for this size garden it's for a smaller garden maybe in your backyard or your or next to the house what needs to happen for a larger acreage and even it could be done for this area is wider terraces so we can actually see behind me some beautiful wide earthwork terraces they give you much larger growing areas more stable earthworks and of course a lot more flexible space and you can see the bed down here this one's a little lumpy because it was just put in recently and you see the cover crop coming up on it now there's been chickens out here so they've been eating on the cover crop and scratching it a bit but this wide terrace is easier to access than these shallow terraces now again the shallow terraces work because you can walk out here and the path that i'm walking on has a double reach bed upslope and it has a double reach bed downslope so it still is a practical way of managing your grow beds, but when it comes down to getting bigger equipment in or a cart, like I could easily bring a wheelbarrow down the path here, but if we had um, a more dense growing area or we've gone vertical, then uh, this would not work if the row was 120 feet long. Because remember, if I gotta walk all the way down the row to get to the other side, and the row is as long as some of those beds over there, then I want to grow as much as possible for that distance traveled. So in this particular area, this could be enhanced by, you see there's a ditch on the bottom that's to catch water to keep it from going out onto the, uh, the driving area. Uh, all these uh, paths or level contours are level and on contour. But again, this could be continue to be double reach beds or these bottom terrace and top terrace could be combined. And if we didn't mind a little ditch on that top corner, we could actually make this a much wider terrace. Again, we still need to be mindful of our slope and that we have watershed above it. So most likely when it comes time for me to start breaking ground and getting it ready for, for gardening, this will still be a micro intensive garden, but it will more likely be herbs and uh, things that, that don't require regular cultivation. Now, again, we have minimal tillage out here um, but we do have a lot of grass because a lot of these beds are pretty new and they'll grass up pretty quick So so this is the size that you could heavily mulch and having double reach beds are easier to walk down and drop that mulch on it um, how, There could be a keyhole right here a little keyhole bed here giving us dub, uh, double reach beds all the way around Just like the keyhole system that we're using up there for the strawberries and again these narrow paths are better when you have sloped ground or where you're growing on sloped ground and you don't want to have to go, you don't have the equipment to get in there. You're just doing it by hand. These, this could easily be ready, prepared by hand to put in a cover crop, to put in plants that have been started elsewhere. Um, and then of course you can see the, uh, the fence that's here, the cattle panel that's here. It used to be cucumbers growing up here. Again, this is a, you can actually see the hairy vetch coming through. This is a perfect solution for a smaller area, but when you start to get longer paths, and I'm not gonna walk all the way out there, but I'll show you from the bottom here. When you start getting longer paths and wider growing spaces, then you're gonna want a terraced system. And you can see the terraces coming here. It's allowing us to step down the hill uh, without the risk of 
uh, the water saturating the ground and the, the ground cutting out. Now again, this was previously just like the beds over there. Okay, now you probably remember the videos. We've had overgrown growth. We've had, uh, you know, cover crops as tall as my chest, even taller than my head. All of it gets chopped down, gets layered in on the soil, and then uh, we'd use shallow tillage to terminate the, the cover crop if there's a lot of weeds in it. If not, we just basically uh, seed into it and get the cover crop gro growing again. And you can cover crop this. The vegetative strips that are on the lower edge of the terrace, so there's like a a line here vegetative strips that are on here can just be hand managed but again when you got a 125 foot row or a 250 foot row it's a little bit different approach both approaches work well both approaches are going to give you growth and and soil stability um, but it just depends on where you're at with your garden if you want help with your design if you want help in in, in your particular piece of land uh, we can show you how it's a little bit more than just cutting terraces uh, because the terraces have to be a certain width according to how high they are they need to be move the water a certain way but again it's not difficult and you could always start like this now i've been eyeing my on this radish right here and if this radish is not rotten i will take this radish out because again the cover crops the cover crops bring us abundance look at that oh my gosh look at that look at all those worms in there Again, that's the value of covering the soil, keeping it in cover, letting it even go idle at times. Look at all those worms. There's like four or five of them in there. It's cold out. I don't want to get cold. But again, oh, old bolt. But again, start with this. And move to this if you have the space available. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. We're at a demonstration site here that you can ask for more information in the comments below. But ultimately, we're showing you it in action. We're showing you it working. And we'd like you to subscribe and join us on the newsletter so you can do this for yourself. All of this is better when you're doing it for yourself at what scale is appropriate for your land. So be sure to visit www.prosperityhomestead.org. Join the newsletter or contact us to ask your questions. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.